You can buy the Piers Morgan on Sensor. I'm joined by the Piers Pack, a veritable trio of stars, royal editor of Vanity Fair, Katie Nichol, playwright and political author Ronnie Greer, and Talk TV contributor Esther Cracker. Well, welcome to all of you. Um, Esther, when you hear someone like Hassan Akkad, who came from Syria, nearly got killed in Syria for expressing his right to free speech and protesting, and then finally comes here and then goes and works on a COVID ward as a cleaner to give back to his country. I mean, it takes a pretty hard heart to say people like him should be, if they get here, shipped off to Rwanda, isn't it? Well, the difference is how he got here, right? I think he had enough respect for Britain to not gatecrash his way via dinghy, right? Well, he gatecrashed his way with a fake passport, which well, meant he didn't have to get a dinghy, but he was in the Calais but... jungle and many other people like him get in these boats every day but that and they risk their lives. Right. That doesn't make it right. And this is the thing, I think people often assume that we are not compassionate to people's plight to trying mm. to get into the UK. But it really says something about how you try and get into a country if you have complete disregard for rule of law. Look, we're in a cost Doesn't of it living... say that they're desperate people? Yeah, but so they're desperate people in the UK. We're in a cost of living crisis. People are, people are being taxed to try and pay for the um, public services that we use to try and take care of their families, right? And the British taxpayers effectively signed a blank cheque to let these people in. And th there are no cheques, there are no borders, there's none of that. I, I don't think that's fair. But and... Britain's always had a reputation for being, as Hassan said, you know, around the world, uh, for being respectful, Absolutely. for being accepting, for being tolerant. There's a limited... There's, there's, no, there is, there's there is. Capacity. There is, and there are no doubt there are some people, I'm sure, who scam the system. But there's also no doubt that the majority of these people are fleeing war-torn countries. And we used to feel a moral duty to take people in. Now we feel that the only duty we have is put them on a very expensive plane, making no commercial sense, and fly them eight hours and thousands of miles to Rwanda. I, and I, I think most people I in Britain feel really uncomfortable about this. No, I'm sorry, I don't agree with this idea that we're effectively shirking our responsibility. Britain has always been a very generous country, but we're also a country that has limited space, and there's only so many things we can do. What about genuine asylum seekers, genuine refugees that go through a legal process to try and come to the UK, and we realise that we've, we, we were out of budget because we're having to, you know, put these people in hotels that have effectively come here by dinghies from France. They're not exactly escaping a war-torn country. They're coming from France. It doesn't right? mean they're not escaping war-torn countries. <laughs> exactly. No, I'm... Well, but they are. They just happen to okay, have got to on, France and, and want to come to the UK. If you're a genuine asylum seeker, you go to the first safe country that you, you, you arrive in. What is wrong with France? It's Nothing, but what if they want to come to Britain? Well, you, don't, you don't get a choice. And, and, you say we're not absolving... OK, well, Bonnie, I mean, the argument we're not absolving our responsibility and they should all stay in France or we send them to Rwanda. I don't hear much from that side of the argument saying, actually, we should take a lot of these people in because they come from countries which, in some cases, we have bombed. Well, you know, quick things. I mean, there's a lot to say, but quickly... Um... A lot of people, young people, learn English. That's their language. That's language of business. It is the international language. So they got no business in France because they're not going to be able to speak the language. Okay, that's number one. Number two, one CEO said to me, a guy who makes his way across a desert gets on a boat, a raggedy boat, makes it across the Mediterranean, gets across France and gets here. I might want to interview him for a job. Well, this is like, like, his, like yeah, his son. This is enterprising mm -hmm. dude. And the third thing is, and, and I, I think it's quite shocking, What's not taught in this country is that everyone in this country is either an immigrant or descended from an immigrant. So, therefore, there should be basic understanding of immigration and a basic tolerance of immigration. I agree. But you know, we have to deal with, you know, with, with the country. I mean, I would capacity. say, look, we, you have to control your border. Of course whatever you do. I mean, that's are. a national thing. You have thing. to have a regulated exactly. immigration but there, system. But there's a myth in this country that this country is somehow not an immigrant country. This is an oh, but immigrant the thing, but the country. Is... And not only that, is that, as you said, in World War II, right mm. before World War II, if it wasn't for Britain, there'd be a lot of British people here who would have been in gas chambers if Britain hadn't taken mm. them but in. But the thing is, what you don't understand is, for every migrant that actually successfully makes it onto a boat, that successfully makes it across the Mediterranean and across the Channel, there are tens of thousands of black Africans that are enslaved in parts of the North Africa and Middle East that don't make it across there. Is it's, that, not is just, that, it's not just about these, is that these the, individuals. Is that, is that the reason? No, is, is, that, is that your reason? No, but hold on. It's not just about the individuals that you see that make it across the dinghies. It's, it's the actual economy of people smuggling that you don't see so the other don't, side so so, so why don't we like, go and deal need, with that instead of keeping here's, okay, here's, 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 here's why I do have some sympathy with the argument, is that there's no doubt that our efforts to stop these boats coming mm. have not only failed, the situation has got steadily worse. 
There's also no doubt that if you don't manage immigration properly, you're going to get parts of the country where they feel like way too many people have come in, way too much pressure on the infrastructure, schools, services and so on. There's no doubt those things can also be true, as well as thinking that we should not be sending people to Rwanda. Well, so the answer becomes, if it's not Rwanda... Well, what is the answer? Would you have a problem if it was Canada? They were sending them to. That's what I asked. Uh, exactly. He said not. I, look, this is so a, this is a British. Well, I, I, I actually think it's a complex well, why, issue. And I, exactly, and that's my point. You know, to say that suddenly we do this and that action happens. Mm. We didn't have a chance as a body politic to even ask why this particular country. We didn't have a chance. And even the Tory party is saying it is immoral to actually export our immigration situation. I mean, I get, to told, I get told, for example, that it's, you know, Rwanda, terrible place, blah, blah, blah. And then I remember that my football team, Arsenal, the shirt sponsors are Visit Rwanda. Right? You know, most people could Rwanda. But because but because the president of Rwanda is a big Arsenal but fan. But you know, it's not... And, and he's, they pay £10 million a year to sponsor our shirts. It's not about Rwanda. It's about the country exporting its situation to another country right. to be... It's not stopping anything. We're migrants... Okay. We'll have to wait and, and see. Right. We're going bringing, to move. I want to bring Kate on a different part of this. Prince Charles ignited a firestorm when reported comments he'd made saying he found this policy appalling mm -hmm. were leaked to the media. There's been no denial from the no. palace, which I think always means it's probably true, but there's not... It's not been on the record, obviously. But assuming that it is true, I suppose my question would be, we don't know if he wanted it out there or not. Maybe he did. But... Should Prince Charles be getting into any of these territories right now, well, given that he, he is likely to be king sooner rather than later? And once you're monarch, as his mother has shown for 70 years, you can't be political, because the moment you are, you're going to alienate large swathes of your own people. Well, I think two things. One, we see how divisive this issue is, just with two of your panel this right. evening, right? So, for me... And feelings do and run strong about this on listen, both sides. This is a very... I know in, lots of people who feel the same way that Esther does. It's a very inflammatory subject. Yeah. So, for the future king to be wading in, however that may be, and you're right, we don't know the context, mm. but there hasn't been a denial, um, is quite a divisive thing to say. We don't expect that of a member of our royal family. We don't expect, as a future king, for Charles to be political in any way. Now, we know that the Prince of Wales is very outspoken on a number of issues, from architecture to GM crops to climate change. I mean, he once said when he was accused of being a meddling prince, well, if meddling's making things better, I'll meddle he's away. Also, his history has been quite kind to him he, well, in a lot of the judgment astute. calls that he's made. He's so, been very astute. But that may not be the point. You know, maybe the Queen... Had, I know she has quite a few opinions, but... Well, we never she, knew what her opinion was over Brexit. I mean, she right. just simply didn't get involved. But but we, I, think it's I think that's the key, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, I don't think you can be a, a king or queen of this country and have political opinions. No, and we air. know that Charles does have political opinions, and I think there's something in what you say that possibly he wanted this out because there hasn't been a denial. Mm. But it, I think it's very dangerous territory. I think climate change, or it is political, he might argue that this is a humanitarian issue, but it's got him into hot water. Well, as someone who's not grown up in a monarchy, I have to say that, first of all, the guy should be allowed to say what he wants to say. I know he can't, and I know that somebody leaked it and it, that he hasn't denied it is his way. This will be his kingship. He's getting us ready for the way he's going to be. Well, maybe. He's, oh, maybe. No, 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 I, I, but he won't I'm be able to intervene well, with the government well, 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 legislation. Well, well, no, he won't. But he's made his opinion. Mm. And I think younger people will say, yeah, he should be able to say what he wants to say. I, I, I mean, I certainly... My every instinct say, would be yeah. free speech. He should be entitled to his opinions. Yeah, I don't absolutely. want him to not have opinions. The issue becomes, should a monarch be able to express political opinions. Well, should you have a monarchy? Well, that, well that's... Well, you're, adding, you're giving them ammunition, right? You know, right. you don't want to have it. one. And, and I, I think mean... the fastest way to end a monarchy is if you have a monarch who expresses political, political opinions, opinions on hot-button issues yep. where you alienate immediately large swathes of the population. But Charles is a child, as you say, Charles is a child of the 60s. Mm. Charles has always spoken out. Yes. Charles has always But only as a Prince mouth. of Wales. Yes, and, and yes, he is but still the Prince of Wales. But he's still yeah. the Prince of Wales. And Thank he you. has also acknowledged okay. that Thank when you. he's king, that will change.